train to the Plastic Underground. Approaching the station, please stand away from the platform head. underground today is a little bit different uh, usually I do a couple pieces here and there today I'm actually gonna show you guys how I made like a complete costume pretty quick impromptu costume so see what happens to me is uh, I have other projects I'm working on you know in between work and uh, you guys know like Will and I do the nerd holes we do like podcast movie reviews that kind of stuff so you know, Will calls me up on a Friday night and he says, Hey, so I want to watch and review all of the Indiana Jones movies before the new one comes out. And I say, Hey, that sounds great. You know, let's do it. Then he says, So can you whip together an Indiana Jones costume so we can do a little bit of filming for an intro? And I say, Yeah, of course. Of course. And he says, Great. Let's record Sunday. I said, okay, next Sunday I am free. He says, no, this Sunday. <laughs> so, here is how I made a quick, impromptu Indiana Jones costume. Uh, I'm gonna show you all the things I did, starting with the hat. We're gonna work our way to the shirt, the belt, the whip, and the gun holster. Pants, the boot, boots are stuff I had on hand, and the bag I had on hand, will let me borrow a jacket to kind of complete the uh, the ensemble. The shirt I had was a white dress shirt and I actually will show you in this video how I used some old coffee to dye the shirt and make it look a little bit more uh, dirty you know kind of his shirt is like a like a cream color but anyway I use coffee and I will show you guys how I made a quick Indiana Jones costume. All right, so starting this costume off, we are going to start with the hat. So I made this quick um, template for the hat. I uh, taped two of these together to make the full um, piece that goes around your head. And then you just have to glue one seam together. Uh, and that uh, helps hide seams and uh, makes it so you don't really see where you, all the glue marks and it also helps keep it a little bit more round too we just having that one seam down the middle there and you can put that um, that goes on the side it's a side seam so I glue that together and then I cut out the um, piece that goes in the top the middle of the top this is the part where your head actually sits against. I am using two millimeter HD foam for uh, this part of the hat, just because I wanted them to be a little bit thinner, a little bit more flexible, uh, a little bit more uh, leather-like. And then for the the brim of the hat, I I will use a two millimeter um, what the foam, so it's a little bit more thick, a little bit more rigid. Um, it's still two millimeters thick, but it, it, uh, it's more of a plasticky, uh, foam. So it's, uh, it can take a beating and it can kind of hold its shape on its own, which is nice. That's kind of why I used it. So I just glue this center part in here. Now for the brim, I got lucky and this template fits. Uh, you can get two on one sheet of foam, which is always nice to not have to use two full sheets of foam for um, for one template. So I cut out the left and the right. These are both uh, symmetrical pieces. They um, 
They're both the same on both sides, obviously right and left. And cut both of these out. These are all straight cuts. There's no bevels or anything like that. You can see how those will glue together. Now, to glue these, I marked the center on the front and the back of the um, the dome part of the hat. I, I'm not sure what that's called on a hat, honestly. And I just kind of start there, attack those in place, and then I just work my way around and just glue the the hat to the brim. I could tell that that was going to be a little bit too tight, so I um, undid that. And when I put the other side on, I will just trim those uh, together to make them uh, symmetrical. So you can see I glue the the white HD foam to the red part, to the, to the brim, not the other way around. Uh, it just kind of sits against it a little bit better. Then I can glue the front seam together of the brim. Really trying to push that together, make sure that it's it, the seam won't open. And then I give the hat a little bit of a heat so that I can add the um, the shape to it there. The try to get that distinct indie fedora uh, shape. This is one of those things that you have to keep doing until you kind of like the way it looks. The first time I, I did this shape right here, it wasn't like my favorite, so I just kind of kept working it and shaping it. And uh, I heated it up a couple times just to kind of get the shape that I was happy with. So this is um, two millimeter HD foam. I cut the strips out and I glue them around the hat as the ribbing that goes around the hat. I, um, I guess I lost the footage for that somehow, but uh, you just cut out strips and you glue them around the hat on the bottom. Now this is the bow that goes on the ribbing. So I'm just using some really thin, cheap, it's almost like one millimeter foam, craft foam. And I just kind of glue this uh, seam together, which creates this, um, this like circle. And then I flatten it out and then I pinch the middle on the front and back. And then I use this extra strip here. I glue this to the back. And then I wrap that um, all the way around the front. And I kind of I kind of pull on this tight so that it does actually bunch the foam up and give it that uh, like tied bow. So now you can take that bow and you can glue that right on that seam line there on the band. You might not have a seam line there if you use a bigger piece of foam than I did. Then once all that is done you can just kind of go around with your Dremel and reshape all of the, the top part here you can kind of um, curve this piece here a little bit sand it so it's not a straight cut um, probably wouldn't be a bad idea to do that before you heat, heat it up and shape the top of the hat just so you don't have to do this after and then um, because this was such a rush build I didn't even seal this foam with anything I didn't do Sometimes you see me do like Mod Podge. Sometimes you see me do Plasti Dip. Usually it's Plasti Dip. Um, I didn't have time for that. And I took a chance and I just went straight to paint. And that's kind of something that I never do. So I used my heat gun to heat seal this first. And then I just went through with this can of uh, this brown here. And I just sprayed it. I just sprayed the whole thing. And you can see it, it worked out pretty good. Um, it gives you this little bit of texture, obviously, where the paint doesn't soak in all the way. But I was going to repaint this anyway. So I'm using this technique where I put heavy paint on and then I dab it with this brush. And just kind of give it this texture. Just to kind of give it this uh, leather or I think it's supposed to be like, uh, like beaver hide. 
And then I go through with a little bit of lighter brown and I just dry brush the edges. You can see how rushed I am. I'm actually dry brushing this without uh, the bottom being dry, the bottom layer paint. Then this band here, this just gets some dark brown. So I just paint the bow and I paint this band all the way around. And that is it for the hat. Then we can move on to the uh, holster here. So again, this is a template that I made and this is still two millimeter HD foam. The base is a full shape and then the top part there, you can see I cut um, maybe half an inch past the, the line just to make it uh, wider so that when you glue it, it will um, be more open so that like your, your gun can fit in there. If you have a revolver, I didn't have an old style revolver when I made this, so um, this might not fit uh, a gun perfectly. I didn't try it with anything I had on hand, um, but um, it, shouldn't, it shouldn't be too far off. I, I did use I did use like a um, a standard like revolver for the shaping when I made it. So um, obviously you can make that top piece a little bit wider if you need to for whatever you have for your gun or whatever. But that's just kind of like the base the base template. And then that top folds down, and to keep that in place, you put this strap on. I glue the strap to the back. But, um, so I have this bag of belts that I always save. I always try to keep leather belts because you never know when you're going to need them. And this is a perfect example. So I pull out this belt here. Uh, it's kind of old and faded and worn out, which is perfect for this. I mark out here where the belt will go. And then I can just take some scrap foam and kind of glue this on to make a, um, a, uh, a belt holster. And um, I probably should have used a bigger piece of uh, foam for this, but this was just some scrap that I had left around. And uh, it fits, it's pretty tight. and. Um, which ends up not being too bad because it doesn't really move around on your belt, which is good. And uh, so yeah, I just glue both of those to the back. And then I just slowly work the belt through there. Then I bought these magnets on Amazon uh, for pretty cheap. They're square because I had a different project in mind for these, but also they will work perfect for this. So I glue one in place on this strap and then I can um, use that to kind of judge where I want the other magnet to go and I glue that on top of that part there so that now that will close and stay closed. Doing the same thing with the spray paint, spray it first, give it a good coat of spray paint. Then I go through with some uh, brown acrylic paint and I just kinda am just painting it like all over the place. I'm trying. I'm not trying to give it like a solid paint because I, I don't want it to just be a solid color. I'm trying to like keep it textured and, and not uh, uniform. Then I go through with this uh, um, 
I forget what this color is called. It's like a Sahara brown. And just giving it, making it look like it's old leather, you know, just kind of doing the edges and stuff. And then I can start the whip. This is a piece of uh, half inch PVC pipe. It's silver because I used it for a different project and it broke. So I just kind of trimmed it to the size of my hand. And this cable here is some old, uh, it's like actual cable, like for your house. Um, my house, when I bought my house, I had a ton of this stuff throughout the basement. And uh, I took most of it down because it's always in the way, it's always hanging. And I don't use the cable in the house only for the back of the router. So I don't need it running to every bedroom. Back in the day, they would be in every bedroom for your cable boxes and your, um, you know, for your TV and stuff. So, not anymore. So, that's what I'm using for the actual whip part. And I glue that inside the handle. You see, I put some foam on there to make it thicker so that it fits in there good. Now, I'm just taking some duct tape. This, like, chrome duct tape is all I had on hand. And um, I'm just kind of taping that bottom and making it uh, so that it tapers down naturally so it's not just a step there chunk of foam I cut in the circle I glue that to the top of the handle and then uh, I'm just using that same tape and going around and taping everything just kind of shaping it with the tape and covering the foam so it's all uniform Then I can wrap the cord into a, um, a circle here, just a standard wrap. And I tuck the I tuck the end through the middle there, just to give it this extra like like hold. And you can see so far, like already, that's a pretty convincing like whip. So then what I do is I tape the cord this cable together and I just slather some glue on there just to make sure that it holds that shape. Now I'm using some electrical tape because it's um, it's almost like a vinyl. It's elasticy. It stretches good. And I'm just going through the whole thing and I'm just wrapping this um, in this like wrap pattern to make it look like the leather wrap that normally a, a whip would be. So I do that the whole way down. Even on that chrome part on the top of that circle, I go back over and just add a little bit extra and just so everything is the same. And I wrap this down all the way down the cable. So then giving it a coat of this spray paint again, um, everything is painted the same brown for the base. Then I mix up some brown and some orange to give it more of this like leathery brown. Uh, it's amazing like how many browns there are. Like some things are, you know, just a, like if you, if you just say brown, you think of just a regular a regular base brown but like there are there are orange browns and red browns and so I'm just using a little bit of orange craft paint just to mix it up and then uh, using some white here on the front this is the cable part that's peeled back and it, it makes it kind of look like the actual like the cracker on the end of the whip that's just a uh, string and uh, the actual part that like makes the noise and um, that is it for the whip. Now for the shirt, I have this old dress shirt, this white dress shirt that I don't wear anymore because it's kind of already like faded. It's not like super white anymore. And uh, I looked up a bunch of things like seeing how to dye material with like coffee and tea. So I had some coffee left over from morning. So I just add that to this pot and I boil it. And then I just kind of dunk the shirt in coffee and quickly realized that um, I did not have enough liquid in there to fully submerge 
my shirt. So what I did is I just added some more coffee grounds and poured in some hot water. Then I can fully submerge that shirt. That's important when you're doing this that you make sure that you test it every five minutes or so. And that's a pretty good blend for the shirt. So here we go. So now I'm putting this this pot on top just to kind of hold it in there. And I ended up soaking this for like three, four hours. And then you dump it out and you rinse uh, it out with cold water. And you throw it in the dryer until it's dry. And then you have a pretty good faded shirt. Now you can make this stronger by leaving it longer. But uh, I didn't want the shirt to be like brown. I just wanted it to be like a a dirty cream so pretty happy with the results of this and that is how i made my quick impromptu indiana jones costume i hope you guys like it and i will see you next time